We ran onto the street to find out what was going on. It was Sunday the 22nd. We were assured that the planes overhead were ours. They had been on tactical exercises and had to unload their bombs before landing. We were told to go back to our barracks. We couldn't get back to sleep and at half past six the regimental alert was sounded. We were taken into the forest. I remember there was a radio there. We stood there in the forest. Molotov's speech was broadcast on the radio. Stalin cannot face his people. So he leaves it to Molotov to make the official announcement. Without any declaration of war, German troops have attacked our country, attacked our borders in many places, and bombed our cities with their aircraft. Jatoma, Kiev, Sevastopol, Kaunas, and others. Eight hours have passed since the Germans attacked. Only now are the Russian people allowed to know that their country is at war. And at the height of the Wehrmacht's ferocious onslaught, Stalin disappears completely. He has every reason to hide from his people. Captured German newsreel footage shows Soviet frontier troops overwhelmed, a retreat under fire in total confusion. Whole formations surrendering. Hundreds of thousands of men entangled with fleeing civilians in scenes of biblical disorder. Day of Barbarossa alone, 1,200 Soviet aircraft are destroyed in a single strike. The blame for all their turmoil and suffering lies with one man, Joseph Stalin. His purges of the military in the late 30s have paralyzed the Red Army Command. His stubborn refusal to countenance the possibility of German invasion, despite overwhelming evidence of Wehrmacht buildup on the borders, has left his country utterly exposed. In the fateful first week of the war, when his country has most need of him, Stalin, the man of steel, retires to his dacha and collapses into panic-stricken immobility. Aware of his personal failure and that he has been outwitted by Hitler, Stalin is above all stunned by the sheer speed of the German advance. Professor Volker Gonov, military historian, has unique access to Stalin's private papers. The Germans had taken just six days to reach the outskirts of Minsk, and it was reported to Stalin that their advance units were already east of Minsk. Stalin completely lost his nerve. He was in a state of shock, but he had not completely lost control. How can that be? You must be mistaken, he said. How can the Germans be in Minsk? He could not in any way accept that the Germans could have got to Minsk in six days, in less than a week. And as it was proved later, he was in a terrible state of shock and had to spend several days at his dacha. It was there at the dacha that members of the Politburo finally brought him back to his senses. Molotov and other members of the Politburo visit the stricken Stalin at his dacha. 
They plead with him to take control, asking if he is willing to lead the State Defense Committee. He agrees. Four years on, Stalin will confess to one of his aides that he thought Molotov and his colleagues had come to demand his resignation. Shaken into action by their visit, the Man of Steel returns. On July the 3rd, after 11 long and painful days, he at last emerges from his dacha to address the nation. Comrades, citizens, brothers and sisters, I turn to you, brave warriors of our army and navy. At this grave hour, the same Stalin whose policy of collectivization has dispossessed millions, who has destroyed his best generals and the flower of the nation's intelligentsia, who has ordered hundreds of thousands of Soviet citizens to be shot or left to rot in slave labor camps. This same Stalin turns to his people with the supplicant call brothers and sisters and appeals to them to join forces to fight a great patriotic war. My friends, the treacherous invasion of our motherland, which began on the 22nd of June, continues despite the heroic resistance of the Red Army and despite the fact that the enemy's finest divisions and air squadrons have been destroyed. But even now, his speech is a shoddy tapestry of lies. The best German units have not been destroyed, and the Nazis will not be defeated as easily as he implies. And so, galvanized, they march to a war they believe will last a month at most. In their worst nightmares, they do not imagine that it will take four years to defeat the invader. that on the long road to Berlin, 25 million soldiers and civilians.